I've been bootstrapping my contracts for years because electronic document signing tools are so expensive. Now I don't have to because JotForm just released JotForm Sign, which is included in my JotForm membership, and it allows me to collect legally binding signatures and fillable PDFs that I can send electronically all within JotForm. I can't wait to show you how it works. And without further ado, let's hop in. When you're ready to get started, click on Create Form and then select Create Signable Documents. This is how you'll be able to collect legal e-signatures directly in JotForm. From there, you'll want to upload your document. You can drag and drop your document directly into JotForm, or you can click on Upload Document to find the file on your computer and bring it into the system. Now, if you just want to get acclimated with the system, you can also click on Try Demo Document instead just to poke around. Once your document has been uploaded to JotForm, you'll see a few new options appear. You can click on the trash can to get rid of the document, click on Add New Document to bring in a new file, and when you're ready to progress, you can click on Create Signable Document. From there, JotForm will scan your PDF and automatically detect fields. To make those fields appear, click on Detect Fields. Now, you may have some missing after this process is complete, so you can manually add fields by clicking on the left-hand side and dragging them into your document. So say for instance, in this case, we're missing the field under phone number. Under basic fields, we can locate that, drag it into the document, and make minor adjustments. So we can click and drag it to change the placement. We can also drag it to make it longer. Now on the right hand side, when the field is selected, you will see the property options for that specific field. If you ever have trouble locating it, you can select the field and click on the gear icon. You'll see field assignee. This is the person who's responsible for putting the information in the field. If you need to change the role, click on the drop down and then select the person who's responsible for that information. From there, you can also select the field label if you want to change the text that appears when you see the field in the form. You can also make a field required by simply clicking on off, which will toggle it on, and you'll see the red asterisk appear for those that are required fields. Now, if you want to add an additional person to sign the document, Say for instance, in this case, if you scroll down to the bottom, you can see the academic advisor's name, the student's name, if you wanted the parent's name as well. You can also, again, drag those fields directly into your document, put them where you'd like, and then add an additional signature. Now, as soon as you add a signature, you're going to see that a new option will need to be added. So again, we want to assign this not to signer one, not to me, but we wanna add a new role. And so now we have a third signer. So if you have a document that needs additional signatures than those that were auto detected, that is how you would add it to the document. So all of this is under the build tab of the JotForm Sign Builder. The next step that we need to do is click on Settings. But remember, at any time, you can also preview the document by toggling the switch over here to get a preview. Under Settings, you'll see General Settings and Email Settings. General Settings is how you will change the name of your document. Now, it's going to automatically pull in the name based on the file name. So in this case, you can see it's a pretty wild name. If I wanna make it something more identifiable, all I need to do is click, delete that text and add a new name. Under email settings, you can click there to customize the subject and the message that will go forth with your document when it needs to be signed. So you can keep the sample subject line or you can change it to something more specific. If you want to add an additional message, you can put it in this box here. The last step is the send tab. When you click there, this is how you will invite people to sign your document. 
you can type in their names and their email addresses in the fields here, and this will assign the name and email address to those fields in the document. Remember, we added signer three because we wanted the parent to also sign the document. So this could be the place where you put the parent's name and the email address. If you need to change the signing order, just toggle on signing order and that will give you the option to drag and drop. So that will affect who needs to sign in which particular order in order to complete the document. You also have additional options in the Send tab under Options. You can have an expiration date for your document. If this is something that is time sensitive, you can toggle that on. If you want to turn on automated reminders to remind people to sign the document, you can toggle that on here. And signer delegation lets signers delegate the document to another person. So if you sent it to an email address for a person and they would rather their virtual assistant take care of it or however, you can also toggle that on there. Now, if you would like to CC a person on the email invitation message, you would type their email address in this box before you give it a send. When the sign process has successfully started, you can see all your active signing documents and track them by clicking on the track button in the top right hand corner. This is what the dashboard looks like once the document has been sent out. You can see the tabs at the top say all documents, waiting for signatures, submissions will be listed here, waiting for others listed here. And then once they're completed, they'll be under the green tab. If they've been canceled, they'll be here. And if they've been declined, that'll show up there. Now you can also click on the job form logo in the top left-hand corner. And once you have created a document that needs to be signed, it will also appear here. So you can always access all of your documents that have been sent by clicking on the job form icon and selecting my documents. If you've not sent out one in the past, then you'll see this area will be blank and you'll need to click on create signed document to get started. This is what your form will look like on the recipient side of things. They'll see that sample subject line unless you've changed it and then a button inside of that email for them to review and sign the document. All they need to do is give that a click and it will open it up on their end and show them the fields that are required in order for them to sign and complete the document. When it's time for them to sign the document, they have a couple options. They can type it in or they can draw it. They can also select the color and change the style if they would like. When all of the required fields are completed, they will receive this pop-up that says, please read the following before signing the document. I agree that my electronic signature below will be as valid as a handwritten signature and considered original to the extent allowed by applicable law. Then they also see a consumer consent disclosure, which they can click on here to view. And by accepting and sending, they are adding a legally binding signature to this document. So they'll just click on accept and send. And then it will progress to the next person in the sending order. They'll receive this notification saying you successfully signed the document and they will get a summary of the document in their inbox. Once a document has been completed, it will show up under your completed tab. And if you need to download the document, you can always click on the right hand side that says download signed document. If you want to view the audit trail for your document, all you need to do is scroll down to the bottom and the audit trail is attached to the signed document within the job form system. One more thing before I let you go, there are over 600 plus JotForm sign templates available within JotForm. So if you are not uploading a document directly to JotForm for signatures and you want to actually start from a template, you can leverage ones that JotForm has available. There's everything from proposals to lease agreements to invoices and confirmation letters. So don't forget to check out those as well. When you're ready to use the template, all all you need to do is click on the use a template button. Thank you so much for watching this video. Get 50% off your first year when selecting an annual paid plan with JotForm at LaShondaBrown.com slash JotForm. And if you didn't know, you can build an app with JotForm. Make sure you check out that video linked over here along with my JotForm playlist. Until next time, ta-ta for now.